The following presentation has been awarded the family approved seal by the Dove Foundation. Okay, Catherine, are you all packed up? Yes, but why can't I stay here while you're gone, Mom? By yourself? Overnight? <laughs> no way. What kind of mom do you think I am? Besides, Aunt Jean is looking forward to seeing you again. It's not the problem. What? Well, I just don't like Uncle Jesse. What? Uncle Jess? Well, he probably won't even be there. You know he works for that trucking company. It's just as bad as being a stewardess. Spending so many nights away. Ugh. That's why Aunt Jean loves having you there. Are you sure he's not going to be there? I mean, are you positive? No, I'm not positive. Oh, goodness, we're going to be late. We cannot be late. You know that. The airplane does not wait. Remember, I'm building up that college fund, and I know you don't understand, but it's all for you, babe. Now, please cooperate and put on a happy face, okay? Okay, folks, let's get it quiet. We're down to our final two, Emily and Joe, going after the 1979 Sword Award. We've all worked really hard and done a great job on our Bible verses, and we're down to the final two. So, are y'all ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Your next verse is 1 Peter 4, 7 through 8. Ready, go. <laughs> I got it. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Okay, Emily, I appreciate good effort, good effort by Emily, but Joe has won our 1979 Sword Award for this year. Joe, it's great that you won it all, but... Well, what, Mr. Allen? Well, the point of these contests is not to bring you glory, but to help you use God's Word in your life. Yeah, yeah, I know. Look, Joe, you're a natural leader. You have a lot of success ahead. But if you choose to follow your way versus God's way, uh, you're going to fail. Don't worry, Mr. Allen. I won't fail. I'm it yet. See ya. Guys, look at this. Man, you're amazing. You won that thing again. And the spelling bee. And you're the best player on the basketball team. And baseball team. And football team. Hey, guys. Watch this. Oh, my gosh. Those are eighth graders. Okay. Katie, come on. You know I can't be late. You understand that, right? Go. Oh. Do something fun when I get home tomorrow, okay? Okay. Hey, where's your Ken doll? Does a Barbie need her date? I don't know. I don't know. What? I hate that doll. Hey, safety first. You know the rules. Seatbelts.
Michael, are you seriously not up? You need to get up, get a shower. You're not even going to have time to eat. If you're going to get something to eat, you're going to have to eat in a hurry. Okay, I have a showing at 9 o'clock, then i got to get to the office and get stuff ready. Then I have showings all afternoon. I've even got to meet with a friend of mine who's just moved back to the area. Like, I have time for that. Anyway, I'm going to have to drop you off early at school. Where's Dad? I thought you said he's coming on late last night. Uh, yeah, he decided to stay overnight and fly in this morning. <laughs> That's what you said last time, except it was another three days before he got home? Yeah, well, stuff comes up, dear. When did he say he's going to come home late? He didn't tell you, did he? Michael, before he left, he said he might have to stay over another day, okay? Why, why does it matter to you? I mean, what difference does it make? I mean, can't you tell when he is out of town, things are a whole lot less complicated? We are a busy family. I'm not busy. I am definitely busy, and you need to hurry up because I have got to get you to school, and I've got to get me to work. I mean, if I'm going to pay for that new voice teacher of yours, I've got to get some commission coming in. Mom, we don't need a new voice teacher if it's going to be too expensive. Oh, it's worth it, and we're doing it. And you, my son, you are going to be the best that you can be. I don't even know if I want to pursue music. Not everyone else is excited about it as you are, Mom. Well, are you excited about it? I don't know. I don't know? Yeah, I mean, if everyone else was excited about it. I mean, I love singing and... That's know. right. You know what, Michael? You love singing. You're a singer! I mean, when you were little, we couldn't even get you to stop singing. So everybody else better get on board with this, because this is important. And if everybody else doesn't, well, who needs them? What can I get for you today? Well, aren't you a happy morning person? Are you new here? I haven't seen you before. Yes, sir. It's my second day. But but I've worked at other coffee shops before, so you're in good hands, I assure you. So, uh, what can I get you, sir? Sir? <laughs> you make me feel old. Uh, okay, uh, what can I get you, buddy? How old do you think I am? Now, how dumb do you think I am to try to answer that one? You know, men don't really think about stuff like that. The ones who want you to guess their age pretty much are. Fair enough. Oh, he's cute. What is he? Seven, eight? Mike? Yeah, he's he was about that age in that picture. Oh, well, how old is he now? Michael's about, uh, 16. Hey, what's up with the button? Just what it says. How can I pray for you? How about we just do some black coffee? I just flew in from Chicago on the red eye, so. All right, so uh, does he play ball in high school? Who? Michael, your son. Oh, uh, yeah, Mike, Mike, uh, Mike's pretty good. Okay, what about your family? What about my family? I could pray for your family. You do that. Okay, what's your name? Joe. Oh, hey sis, aren't you supposed to be in school by now? No, I'm on my way. Can I leave this here and you bring it to the church tonight? Yeah. Hey, but remember whenever you're at school, please be on the lookout for kids who ask to be in the youth band. Right now, I think all I need is someone who can play keyboards and sing. I don't want to do that, Sarah. I'm new there. It's already awkward enough. What do I say? Hi, I'm Emily. You want to be in my sister's church youth band? Look. They hired me to work with the youth and organize the band. You're the best lead on finding kids. Plus, it's a great way to get some new students coming to the church. Just pray about it and God will show you who to ask. Then it'll be easy. Besides, that job and this one are the only things paying for rent right now, so please just 
help. And if this doesn't work out, we're gonna have to start pawning off our jewelry or something. Mom gave me this bracelet and I don't wanna sell it. Why won't you let me get a job? Emma, I wasn't thinking, okay? Don't, don't worry, we won't have to do that. You don't worry about money right now, okay? Just focus on school, make some friends and get good grades. That's it. Sarah, you don't have to treat me like a baby. If we need money, I can get a job. That's what 16 year olds do. But I want you to focus on school right now, okay? Make some friends. That's what mom would have wanted. And what about you? You're gonna take on all this stress so I can have this happy life? It's not that stressful, okay? I'm fine. Look, when I start feeling sorry for myself, I just do what mom always used to do. I look for other people to pray for. So far, I have Joe's family. Hey, hey, Joe. Hey, Jim, what's up? Uh, the clients out in Midland want another face-to-face. -face. I just can't get out there right now. I'm the coach of Blake's team. They've advanced to the finals. Sandy's completely overwhelmed with the baby. Hey, say no more. I'm on it. But, you know, you're taking all the fun out of the competition around here. What do you mean? Well, haven't you heard? Our esteemed boss man, Anthony Vero Esquire, is promoting one of us to managing partner. Rumor has it. He's up for federal judge. Seriously, district court? Yeah. That's gonna be a miracle if he gets approved. He's good at making both sides of the aisle mad. Yeah, but when it comes to Anthony Vero, even I believe in miracles. That guy could get a kidnapper off with a jury full of grandmas. That is, if the kidnapper's innocent. Right. The point is, he's bringing in a new managing partner. And if you don't sacrifice with the team, it probably won't be you. So, you wanna think this out? Nah, thanks for going. It's what I do. Joe, Mr. Vero would like to see you now. Really? See, Jim? It's happening already. Get ready to change the letterhead. Mr. Vero, did you need to see me, sir? Joe, how are you? Come on, sit down, please. And it's Anthony, please. Call me Anthony. Okay. Uh, Anthony? Did you need to see me, sir? Yes, I did. I would assume you've heard that shortly I'm going to be appointed federal judge? Yes, and congratulations. That's, uh, if the Senate approves you, of course, uh, which which I'm sure they will. I mean, they'll be crazy not to. By the way, uh, congratulations on the Conway case. Thank you. We um, had a lot of help on that one. I can't believe that witness just came out of the blue. I, I thought we were sunk. That's the power of prayer. He decided to come forward at exactly the right moment. I thought Conway was guilty. You have an incredible sixth sense. Uh, I've never seen anything quite like it. Hmm. Joe, what do you think is more powerful than the law? Is, is this a trick question, sir? Nothing is more powerful than the law. Love? Well, yeah, that and greed, right? We deal with one or the other in all of our cases. Mm -hmm. What about you? What do you love? Who do you love? I'm not sure where you're going with this, Anthony. I'm assuming there's a reason why you need to know. Oh, yes. Yes, there is. Okay. Well, I, I love my family. Your family? Yes, my wife and my son. Hmm. I, I very rarely hear you speak of them, so I didn't know if you were with all that close. And, oh, by the way, thank you so much for having Catherine call my Aunt Rosa. She basically raised me, and I really wanted to make sure we had a good realtor that she could trust in place. You're welcome. Uh, my pleasure. In fact, uh, she's going to be in really good hands because Catherine's uh, very devoted to her job. And Michael, your son, what about him? How's he doing? I understand he sings? He does, yes. That's right. He, he sings, yes. Perhaps the next time he has a recital, you can let me know. I hear he does Italian opera, and I would love to hear a good aria. Really? Of course. Who doesn't love a good aria? Right. <laughs> who doesn't love that? Um, I'll check it. I'll, I'll make sure that I find out, and I'll let you know. In fact, uh, why don't we go together? That would be good if you're not out of town. I'll make sure I'm in town. I'll, we, we'll clear the schedule, and I'll make it happen. That's great, Joe. So that's it? You just wanted to know 
about Michael's next recital? Yeah, that, that's it for now. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vero, mm -hmm. Anthony, have you given any thought to who will be managing partner after you're gone? Yes, yes I have. Okay, so is, is there a criteria for that position, sir? Because I'd like to submit my name as a candidate. You'd like to submit your name? Yes, I would. Let me ask you, do you understand what it means to submit your name into the service of someone or something? I believe I do, sir. Well, that's good, because the person who leads this firm is going to fully understand the concept of service and submission. Okay, I see. So how will you evaluate that? In other words, how, how would you know that I understand those concepts? I'll know. Now you just enjoy your evening with your family. Okay. I've, I've really enjoyed our chat. Thank I you. Have. Thank you. <laughs> I have too. Perhaps we can get together for lunch in the near future and speak a little bit further? Uh, that would be great. Uh, how about next week? Next week looks great. If you don't mind, just get it on my calendar on the way out. Will do. Will do. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. pretty good <laughs> what I can't shoot hoops with my son with some kind of look from you uh, mom I, it's okay I, it was actually kind of fun have you practiced your music for voice today yeah I, I was gonna do that right now hey let's do it again tomorrow what are you doing he needs to work on his music that is his gift not sports well that's obvious <sighs> He hear you. So what? He doesn't care. He knows he stinks of basketball. It's just a way for us to hang out. Believe me, I gave up on him being a ball player a long time ago. Why can't you ever do anything that he enjoys? He would do anything to get to spend some time with you. It has always been that way. But since you are never around, he does what he enjoys and he does music. What he enjoys? What? That? You want me to do that? Catherine, that's not my thing. Well, basketball isn't his thing, but he does it for you. I, you know, I don't even know why he attempts to have a relationship with you at all. You know, he should just work on what makes him feel best. What? Like you have? Yes, like I have. That is the healthy thing to do when you have a toxic person in your life. What is that? More wisdom from Dr. Ortolano? Well, at least I am trying to get some help to better myself. To better yourself? All right, so tell me when that whole process of bettering yourself and the rest of your life is complete, okay? Let me know if that works out for you. Because the way I see it, Catherine, you have it pretty good already. You don't see it. What do you mean? Look, you have a husband, a house, oh, a Oh, I've kid. got a husband, all right. One who travels all over the country doing business and seeing who knows who when he's out of town. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is that supposed to mean? Forget about it. <laughs> it's not like I care. I stopped caring a long time ago. Look, I know I'm not perfect, but if there's something about me that bothers you, let's discuss it, let's talk about it so we can deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't care. Going to bed. Yeah. That's always your answer. Walking away from the problem.
Yes, Tony. And Rosa. So, um, you spoke to her about selling your place? Yes, I did. Catherine seems very nice, very professional, not pushy. I'm sure she's a good realtor. Good. Um, so what's your take on her? Well, I was able to figure out that things are bad. Her marriage is distant. I think she has some pain from her past that she hasn't dealt with. And you figured that all out from one conversation? One of the privileges of being old is that you do get away with being nosy. I asked a few questions about her family and her past, and I listened to the tone in her voice. I suspect God has brought her into my life because I understand the pain of, of childhood abuse. That seems to be where God has been using me most lately. I'm so sorry about your past now, Rosa. Beauty for ashes, Tony. God can give beauty for ashes. <clears throat> I will remember that, Aunt Rosa. I will keep working on Joe from this end. I know she's in good hands on your side. Are you sure Joe is supposed to take the firm? Is he going to be able to continue your work there? You know, Aunt Rosa, you uh, always taught me, uh, instructed me to pray and take it one step at a time. That's exactly what I'm doing here. And every time I pray, God brings Joe and his family to my mind. He seems to want me to focus on them. And yes, I, I do think Joe has great leadership potential. He's just lost his way over the last year or so. That's a good boy, Tony. I hope you're right. Catherine is guarded, hurting. Something needs to be resolved. I'll find out more. They're at the top of my prayer list. And mine too, Aunt Rosa. Hey, you know, I uh, know a place that serves some pretty good cappuccino. Oh, yeah? Where is it? Let's go. Yeah, it's not far from you. I'll, uh, I'll give you a call on my way over. How about that? No, I like to ride the bus. It gives people a chance to be nice to me. Then they feel better about their whole day. You're the boss. And what do you want me to bring you, Tony? The only time you ever want to meet face to face is when you're craving some home cooking. Tell you what, I'll surprise you. That sounds good, and I, I tell you, if you insist on bringing something, I'm certainly not gonna stop you. I love you, Aunt Rosa. Love you too, dear. Call me back with the time, and I'll meet you, Anthony. Bye. Hey, do you need the piano? Usually people aren't in here after school. Uh, no, I'm just looking for something. I have theater in here second period, and I think I might have lost it then. Go ahead. Don't let me stop you. Oh, no, I was just messing around. Uh, maybe I can help. What are you looking for? A uh, bracelet. Oh, is it this one? Yes! Oh my gosh, you have it? Yeah, I just found it over there on the ground. I was gonna put it in the lost and found. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No problem. It must be really valuable. You have no idea. Oh, it's broken. Well, I'm glad you found it. Glad you found it. Hey, uh, what was that song you were playing a minute ago? I, I don't think I've heard it. Oh, that, I was just messing around. <laughs> you wrote that? I mean, I didn't really write it, but you know, I I'll probably forget it. <laughs> you should write it down. Are you in a band? Oh, no, no. Every time me and my friends talk about forming a band, it never happens. Well, if you want, my sister, she's in charge of getting a band together for the youth group at our church. Would you want to be in it? Uh, we need a keyboard player who can sing. 
probably aren't interested. Uh, no, I, I am interested. I'm just wondering how much time it's going to take up. Okay, well, I'll get my sister to call you then. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Okay. Uh, wait, don't you need my name and number? Yeah. Uh, what church is it at? Uh, Woodland Community. Oh, yeah, I used to go there all the time when I was little for Easter services and stuff. Did you like it? I mean, would you want to go back to it? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Maybe it would help. Help what? Nothing. Um, I'm Mike. My number is 936-494-8952. And I'm Emily. Sarah will be so happy that I found someone. <laughs> uh, what time do we practice? Um, we practice uh, Wednesday at 5.30. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that should work, that should work. We did that so you can be home in time for dinner and stuff. You know, family time. Oh, no, I don't even to worry about that. We never have family time. <laughs> oh. Uh, so Wednesday? Yes. Okay, Wednesday. All right, see you. I'm sorry, I've got to get to my other job. Sorry. No, no, I... It's, it's my sister. I've got to take it. I'm That's all sorry. right. I, I got it. I got sure? it. Yeah, leave the guitar. I'll take care I'm... of it. It's okay. Thank you, dude. It's okay, yeah. Hey, Em, what's up? Hey, do you have a minute? Well, I mean, I'm kind of in a hurry. I'm trying to make it to the worship team meeting, but... What is it? Okay, I lost the bracelet that Mom gave me. Oh, no, I'm so sorry, Em. Wait, why do you sound so excited? Because when I found the bracelet, I also might have found a guy to be in the band. He sings and plays the piano. He says he'll do it. Oh, well, that's awesome, Em. Another prayer answered. Yeah, only I don't think he goes to church that much. But he seems really nice. Maybe he will go to prom with me? What? No, Emily, I don't, I don't think I'm ready for this boy stuff with you yet. Whatever, Sarah. It's just... He's the first guy that I've met here. I'll actually be surprised if he shows up. I mean, I guess it is kind of strange for him to want to join a worship band when he doesn't even really know what worship's about. But let's just pray and see what God does with it, okay? What's his name? Uh, Mike. Okay, Mike. I mean, who knows? Maybe this will change Mike's whole life. Or maybe he won't even show up. Or this could change Mike's whole life. I mean, come on, Emily. God's obviously at work here. He's nudging Mike. And maybe he's using you to help do the nudging, okay? Keep that in mind. What's that supposed to mean? That tone? Just make sure you're not getting in his way. This is about him and Mike, okay? You don't need to flirt to convert here. Oh my gosh, Sarah, that is not what I'm doing. I'll just see you at home, okay? I gotta go. Bye, right, bye. Bye. Thanks so much. I'm, I'm sorry I had to close up early. It's just, I don't even know why I get to these meetings early anyway, because everybody else is always so late. That's not a problem, it's okay. Do you always drink caffeine this late in the day? Oh, I'm just getting to the hardest part of my day, going home. Do you want me to add Joe's caffeine addiction to the list? <laughs> you can if you want to. Looks like I'm uh, sharing some prayer space with Mike. Yeah, he's this kid that's gonna start going to our church. Well, I mean, hopefully start coming to our church. Does he really carry that piece of paper around and pray for people? Yeah. Seems like a waste of time. No offense. Yeah, none taken. Well, why do you do it? Pray, I mean. Um, I guess I just like to waste my time, mainly. <laughs> no, seriously. Why pray? 
mainly because God tells us to. I mean, prayer reminds me that God is God and I'm not. When I see God answer prayers, it helps increase my faith. You know, whenever you start seeing changes in your family, just let me know, because I know for a fact you will. Okay. Well, maybe I have to do some work first, you know, like, I need to convince someone that I'm not an enemy, that I'm a friend, actually a, a best friend. Well, maybe you could start by defining the word friend, so you actually know how to become one. What? I mean, I'm just saying, if you, like, set a goal or some action points, maybe well, you could... I know. You know what? Ugh. I probably, I just haven't had time to think about it, you know, I need to work on that. Well, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life. Lives for his friends. That's from John, isn't it? Right. Who knew you were such a Bible expert? You know, Sarah, this is really about my wife. Yeah. Well. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave it. So far. Yeah. Self-sacrifice. You know, that just doesn't sound... What? I mean, to be honest, it doesn't sound what? Oh, it doesn't sound fun. It doesn't sound exciting. You know, uh, that's not how life really works. I mean, I believe this is how life works best. I mean, I love my sister. I love my life. I mean, I do all this for her. My sacrifice gives me purpose. I mean, it's the way God set things up. Selfishness leads to emptiness, and self-sacrifice leads to joy. I mean, I'm sorry. I've, I've got to go. I'm just... That's all right. Hey, here. What? What is it? Joe, I, I, I can't take that. That's not... Look, it's not a big deal. It's just numbers on a piece of paper for me, Sarah, okay? No sacrifice made, really. But, I mean, you have to understand, I, I can't repay this. No, you don't need to. A good attorney knows that good counsel deserves proper compensation, all right? Pay your bills, Sarah. And keep the faith. Somebody needs to. Yeah. Oh, no, of course it makes sense. It's all good. Thanks. Hey, Dad. Hey, bud. Long time no see. Yeah, busy stuff at work. Hey, how are your workouts coming along? <laughs> when are you going to be able to take your old man down, huh? Yeah, I've been kind of busy. I thought you were making some progress with the workouts. Remember what I told you, girls love muscles. Yeah, well, hopefully not all girls. I'll get back to them later. I still got a lot of schoolwork to do. Yeah, okay, I like that. You stick to that, but Mike, you're gonna have to work hard in life if you're gonna get anywhere, all right? Yeah, I hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah? Who do you hear that from? Your teachers? Yep, especially Mr. Reagan. What does he teach? Voice. Voice? What's that like? Singing, right? Okay, Mike, where's your mother? I think she's showing a house. She said she'd be back later tonight. So, there's no food here. What are we supposed to eat? I don't know. I had cereal last night. <laughs> hey, tell you what. Let's go get something to eat, you and I. Then afterwards, we can shoot some hoops. What do you think? Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Yes, I think two, two cappuccinos, please. Sounds good. And how about some plates for your dessert? Oh, I'd like that. Thank okay. you. Ah, Zia Rosa, buongiorno. Mi bella signora. Buongiorno. 
I see you've brought some goodies. Ah, and what do we have here? It looks like one of your famous apple pies, Aunt Rosa. It's not just an apple pie. It's made with love. Oh, really? Someone brought me one of these when I was feeling low. She told me it was made with love, and she gave me the recipe. Of course, I had to supply my own love for this one. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. I gave one of these pies to Catherine yesterday. Oh, so you've had more conversation with her. Yes, I, I have. We had a wonderful conversation about everything. And Tony, it's just what I suspected. Her childhood was very much like mine. She had a strong desire to keep her mouth shut so she wouldn't be a problem for her mother. Oh, so Joe doesn't know. I'm the first person she's ever told. Well, I'm sure you'll be a great help to her, Aunt Rosa. Well, all I can do is point to God. She has to talk to him. I told her to ask the hard questions. He, he can take it. I told her about my past. Then I gave her a note with 1 Peter 5, 7 on it. So I hope the healing process begins soon for her. And the marriage as well. So how's Joe? Hmm. Don't really know, but I have a good feeling about him. He's very passionate, and I think he's a natural born leader. But is he teachable? <laughs> it's funny you ask. He's listening to me right now because he thinks he's going to take over the firm when I'm gone. So I don't know how pure his motives are, but at least he's listening. Well, whatever works. For now, anyway. Yes. And does it get any better than this apple pie for breakfast? And how about this cappuccino? Very good. I know. It's like the, out of all my classes, I get the most work done. So, what did you think of the band? Oh, I liked it. I liked the music and the people. And your sister is, I don't know, she just seems like a hard worker having two jobs and all. Oh, yeah. Sarah's the best. She was just old enough for the courts to grant her custody of me when Mom died, as long as she provides a stable environment. I try not to be a brat, but sometimes she's just too overprotective, and it drives me crazy. She won't let me get a job, and I know we need the money. Plus, it's like she wants me to do the one thing I do not want to do all the time. School. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. What were you thinking about? Oh, no, there's, there's nothing. No, what was it? I don't know, I'm just... Do you think it's better to have two parents that hate each other or no parents at all? Well, do they hate you? No, just each other. They're fine with me. Well, then there's your answer. I'm thinking the more people you have rooting for you, the better. Oh, I'm so stupid. I mean, your parents are... It's okay. Really. Everybody's got stuff. Just pray. That's what Sarah does, and, you know, God answers. Things will be okay. All right. Uh, so, did you hear what the prom theme is? Oh, yeah. Hollywood magic, right? Right. It's supposed to be, like, an Oscars after party or something. Yeah. Who comes up with those themes anyways? I don't know. Student council, maybe? Well, I don't know. I never go to the school dances. Really? Of course, I've never been to one either since I'm new here. Are they lame or something? I don't know. I've, I've never been. Right. You said that. I think James and Megan are going together. Oh, you mean from the band? Yeah. Oh, well... Maybe they can tell you how it is. Yep. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you later. Yeah, see you later.
Can I get you gentlemen started with anything to drink or appetizer to start with? Yeah, how about uh, some spinach dip, two iced teas? Two, two iced teas, yeah. Get it right out for you. Thank you. So, Joe, I'm really glad that you followed through on the idea of us having lunch together. There's some things I really want to speak to you about. Sure. If Anthony Vera wants to have lunch with me, I'm going to make it happen. Look, you, you never have to doubt my loyalty for you or the firm. That's good to hear, Joe. Thank you for saying that. I want to start out by making sure you understand what this firm is based on. Anthony, rest assured, I understand. In fact, when you become federal judge, I'm going to do everything in my power to grow this firm. Whether or not you take me on as managing partner, I, I'm, I'm a loyal team player. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> when I first became an attorney, let, let me go back. When I was two, my mom passed away. So I was basically raised by my dad and his sister Rosa. Then, when I was 12, my dad got really sick. And when he knew he wasn't going to be around much longer, he wrote me a long letter. And that letter told me everything I really needed to know about life. I'm sorry, I, I, I did realize I, I didn't know any of that. I'm not sorry at all. It's a great letter, and I still have it. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> you know, I wish my dad had given me such instructions. I have a feeling he probably did. In the letter, Dad told me that I needed to do the things that Jesus said were most important. Loving God and loving others. Joe. I'm not mistaken, am I? You, you spend some time around Christian schools, in Christian schools. You know your way around the Bible, right? Yes. Uh, yes, I did. I did. So some of these things are familiar to you, the stories, the parables, the Beatitudes. Look, Anthony, my, my father paid for me to go to all those schools, uh, but he didn't spend much time with me. And he definitely never wrote me a letter. I see. I tell you, personal letters are a powerful thing, Joe. Words are important. Then I guess you would know that being an attorney, huh? My dad always reminded me, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. God's Word. God's message, God's truth. He was given to us for a short period of time in the flesh, but he'll be with us forever in spirit. You know what else Dad told me that God gave us? He gave us our families. They are our foundation. It's where we learn about truth. Truth. Anthony, I remember law classes and philosophy classes, they never answer the question, what is truth? There's a lot of different views on what truth is. I'll tell you what my dad believed, what he based his life upon, was that God created the universe and he also created absolute truth. He fixed things so we would know how to live, his law, which he gave to us. So is that why you chose law? You wanted to be an attorney because you agree with your dad? You could say that. That was part of the reason, yes. Now, I know you don't believe that our laws represent God's absolute truth. No, clearly not, Joe. Our legal system is, is a living organism. It's constantly changing. It's pushed and pulled by people using a flawed, frustrating system. But it's all we have. And in the end, God's will prevails anyway. So why, why bother? Why have you spent your whole life devoted to that system? Actually, I haven't spent my whole life devoted to the system. I've spent my life, or tried to spend my life, loving God and loving others. 
God in the center, then my family, then my work in ministry. All right, but you still have an answer why you chose law as your work. I mean, I know your story. You, you went to law school, you had two jobs, you stayed up late nights. Sounds to me like you would have been better as a pastor or a missionary. That's a fair question. I believe God called me to the legal system because the law is our way of healing broken relationships. It's our way of trying to make things right when we've wronged each other. It's our way of trying to find out what takes priority over what. It's our way of trying to define truth. And Joe, that's where I want to be. I want to be in the mix. I want to spend my life trying to represent what I believe to be God's absolute truth. And you know, I think you've done a great job of that. I mean, you should be very proud of the firm, of your appointment to the court. Uh, I, I truly admire you, sir. Joe, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that it's possible to lead a law firm using God's foundational truth as its basis? I think you've done just that, Anthony. I mean, the, the, the Morgan case, the Caraway case, the whole thing with the Chronicle. Now, those are pretty good examples of what I've tried to do. But, Joe, they're all a vapor. We've talked about this. What's more powerful than the law, Joe? Love. Yeah, love. God's love. God's unconditional love. The kind of love we give to our wives when they're rude and tired and defensive and say things that really hurt our egos. <laughs> well, that sounds a little too familiar. I don't think anybody can give love then. That's the problem, isn't it? That's the issue. Anyone can give love when they receive it first, right? It takes a strong person to live by God's truth and give that love no matter what. I tell you, we need more husbands that'll love their hurting wives until they begin to trust again. You're getting kind of personal, don't you think? Look, you know, there's nothing I can do about my marriage, all right? My, my wife does not want me anywhere near her. She doesn't respect me as a father, as a husband, as an attorney, as anything. Well, now we're getting somewhere, I think, huh, Joe? Look, I, I didn't mean to bring my personal life into this, Mr. Vero. It's Anthony. And let me tell you, everything in life that's important is personal. Joe, I'm not going to be around much longer. And I've got to know that I have someone leading this firm who gets it who will be able to lead from a foundation of God's truth. Someone who will be able to deal the hard issues where it counts most, at home, with their families. This firm, Joe, was based on healing those relationships. It has to start with the leadership. You know, this has been the strangest conversation I've had with, with anyone. Look, first of all, are you asking me to be managing counsel once you become a judge? That's what I'm saying, Joe. That's what I'm saying. You're going to have to step up to the plate real soon. But I don't think I'll ever be a judge. Sure you will. It's all over the news. We've read the papers. The confirmation is going to be quick, Anthony. Joe, the truth has enemies. Powerful enemies strong enemies, connected enemies. Wait, what exactly are you saying? I'm telling you what I said. I'm not going to be around much longer, and I need to know that you will lead this firm from a foundation of God's truth. Get your priorities straight. Start at home. Love your wife and kid. Anthony, that situation is out of my control. But I can assure you, it's not going to affect my ability to lead the firm. And I assure you, it will. 
dust off that Bible of yours. Pray before you do or say anything. And Joe, don't give up. Okay. I won't. And I won't let you down. But if working on my marriage has anything to do with my ability to lead the firm, Anthony, do you think I am the right guy for this? I mean, all of a sudden, I don't feel so qualified. Joe, I'm sure. Now, more than ever. Hey, Joe. Did you send out the memo about tomorrow's meeting? What memo? You know, Vera wanted us to set up a meeting with all the partners. I thought you were going to send out the memo. Yeah. Joe, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. So you're going to send out the memo for tomorrow's meeting for Vera to meet with all the partners? Yeah. Wait. I thought Janet was going to send out that memo. She seems pretty busy. I, I don't really know. Would you like me to do it? No, I got it. Hey, Dad. Hey, Michael. You just miss Mom. She's here for a couple minutes. Then she said she had an appointment with Dr. Um... Tortolano. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Brother, what a waste of time and money. Hey, what do we have here? Yeah, Mom dropped that by. She said she called it love. Hmm. This is a real homemade apple pie. It's delicious. You should try this. Okay, I'm going to warm it up. How do you work this thing anyways? You don't know how to work your own microwave? Son, it's not like the one at work. Right. Yeah. Why have you been home so often? Uh, you know, lately, every time I have a trip scheduled, it just gets canceled. I don't know why. Well, um, since you're here and since you're my dad, um, I was kind of wondering if I could get some advice. Advice? Mike, you know what I do for a living. I charge a lot of money for advice. Uh, but for you, free of charge. Thanks. Mm. Well, see, there's this girl. Get out of here. A girl? Is she pretty? Yeah, she's pretty. All right. So, what? She likes another guy? You want me to take care of that for you? Go beat him up? What? No, Dad. I, I think she actually likes me. I... Really? Yeah, shocking, I know. I mean, either she really likes me or she just wants to go to the junior senior prom with me. I'm not, I'm not sure. Because she was lying on heavy hints that she wanted to go. You sure? Yes, Dad, I'm sure. All right. Come on. Keep going. All right, well, I mean, I kind of want to go, but I don't know. I'm not much of a dancer. I've never really done this sort of thing. I don't know. Part of me wants to go for it, but the other part just kind of wants to let it pass, you know? Okay. I know what you're saying. You don't want to know what I think? I think you ought to go for it. Go for it in a big way. <laughs> what do you mean? Okay, th does she know that you're going to ask her? No, no, I played really dumb. Perfect. Mike, look, high school prom, stuff like that, they only come around here once in a while. Do you care about this girl? Yeah, I mean, I think she's cool. Okay, so we need to make this a very special memory for her, all right? From the minute that you ask her out till the moment that you drop her off at home. It's very special. So. Girls like singing. You sing, right? You want me to sing for her? Mike, Mike, work with me here, okay? Have an open mind. I'm trying to come up with the perfect way for you to ask her. Okay. What? 
I don't know. I've just never seen this out of you, Dad. Mike, we're Cuban. We are natural romantics. If you like this girl and you want to show her your true feelings, they need to come out. You need to go after this and make a big deal out of it. I've never seen you do this kind of stuff for Mom. You know, you're right. I guess you haven't. Before we got married, I used to do this for Mom all the time. Uh, she had fun. She loved the attention. We had a lot of fun. Then we got married. Things changed. I don't know why. And, uh, she got distant. I stopped trying. And, uh, then... Then what? Then, son, I've made some mistakes that uh, haven't really helped at all. Well, have you tried again lately? I mean, with Mom? Because even today, she was acting kind of different. Like what? What do you mean? I don't know. She just seemed more calm, more relaxed. She wasn't rushing around like she always is. She asked me if I'd heard from you and if you're coming home tonight. And she never asks that. Wait, uh, let's go back. I need to know more about this girl. What's uh, what's her name? Emily. Emily, okay. And how often do you see her? I see her sometimes at school, but definitely every Wednesday afternoon. Okay, okay. So we got what, like a week to come up with something really cool? Yeah, at the most. I mean, prom's in three weeks, and I'm getting a really late start. All right. Mom asked you about me, huh? Yeah. Hey. Hey, yourself. How's your appointment? Well, I... <laughs> I really don't think I'll be going back. Really? What happened? I just realized he's just really not helping at all. Helping what? <laughs> Helping my situation. And what is your situation, Catherine? <laughs> That's a good question. What would you say our situation is? Our situation? Yes. Our family, you, me, Michael. Well, for starters, it doesn't seem like much of a family. And that's not your fault, okay? I've been doing some thinking on this on my own, too. But, uh... Some of it is my fault. And, uh, you know, I really, I don't care whose fault it is anymore. Um, did you know, do you know that Michael is going to a church and is in a band at that church? Really? Yeah. Did you know that he likes this girl and he's asking her to go to the junior senior prom with him? Really? Right. He asked me on advice on how to do that. Well, if anybody knows how to impress a girl, that would be you. That's what I told Right this way. Go ahead and have a seat. Okay. Right, right here. Okay. I met you in the auditorium. You were looking for your bracelet. Your eyes consumed me then, and your hair smelled of peppermint. And right at the second I knew.
Yes. Hey, uh, we're gonna go eat after this. Do you wanna come? Yeah. This is great. I can't believe you did all this just to ask me to prom. <laughs> so you liked it? Who wouldn't? But I thought you definitely weren't going to prom. No, I just definitely wanted to be the one to ask. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey, I take it back. What? So, uh, what's your prediction on this? Seems like Barrow's going to uh, make a big announcement today on who's going to take over the firm. Right. Uh, what, what's your guess? Well, uh, if things are the way they should be, I should definitely be considered. I've given my life to this firm. Don't you think we all feel the same way? Uh, although we do know how he feels about Jim. Jim, yeah. Jim is constantly having to leave early to deal with his wife and kids. Actually, he's just leaving on time. It's you guys that are always staying late. Well, that's the mark of a 110% partner, don't you think? If you want to know what I think, I think he's going to announce Joe. Just are you it. kidding me? Joe? Mr. Blaze of Glory? Know. You know, half the time, we're having to clean up after his mess. You know what? I think she might be right. I saw him the other day. They were having lunch together. They're all huddled up in this intense conversation. I think she might be on to something. I think it might be Joe. I'd rather have Jim than Joe. And hey, what about me? I've been here the longest. Don't you think that deserves some respect? OK, Sandy. I know you're upset. I know you're tired. Look, if you need me to come home right now, I'll be there. I can do that. You sure? Okay, we're getting ready to have a meeting. Um, but I can be right there. Okay, all right. Okay, well, I'll see you tonight, sweetie. Um, hey, after the meeting, I'll call a sitter, and we'll go out tonight. Okay, sweetie. Bye-bye. Janice, did you get the coffee? Oh, I thought uh, everyone knew that the coffee maker had been broken for two days now. Actually, I knew that. That's why I bought us coffee from the store down the street. But I left it in the office. Do you mind getting it? Thanks, Janice. Hi, Joe. Bill. Large and in charge, huh? Well, somebody's got to get us coffee around here. So you're uh, buddy buddy with uh, Vero lately. Who do you think he's going to announce as a managing partner? Well, to be honest, it'll probably be me. Well, it looks like no, this decision is not going to be made on merit until that. It's such an arrogant kiss up. He's in, I'm out of here. I didn't know how many hours I put in. He didn't deserve What was that about? Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Let's get right to it. Excuse me. Could I have your attention, please? Is there a problem? Uh, Mr. Barrow, we're discussing who's going to take your place as managing partner once you've gone on to become judge. I see. Joe seems to think it's going to be him, but we know how you feel about uh, Jim. And then there's uh, people with seniority like myself to consider. I see where this is. Um, <clears throat> let me assure you of something. Serving as managing partner for this company is not glamorous. It's exactly about what it says, service. Leadership in this organization means sacrifice. And sacrifice means putting others' needs first. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Okay, I got this. Seriously, go ahead. You okay there? Yes, sir. Good. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to be around much longer. And I know that the full impact and reality of that statement doesn't get through to you right now. But once I'm gone, no matter who serves as managing director, I need you to understand something. I did not, and I repeat, did not start this firm in order to get rich. I started this firm to help people through their darkest moments. Through death, through heartbreak, through child abuse. Treat them with dignity and respect. Please show compassion. Could we go back to that, what you said there at the beginning, that we're not going to fully understand what you mean when you're talking about leaving? You're going on to become a federal judge. Isn't that a good thing? Are you talking about the allegations in the news this morning? Surely, that's a political witch hunt. After all, you have a perfect, crystal clear record. I appreciate that. But let me tell you, we are entering dark times. There are people out there who will try to discredit me, and maybe worse. <clears throat> Just know this. The truth has many enemies. They may win the battle, but I assure you they will not win the war. Rest assured, Mr. Barrow, you can count on my loyalty to the firm. I hope I've made that clear. <clears throat> Joe, <clears throat> you'll be surprised when things get really tough. You'll disappoint yourself. You'll disappoint the firm. You'll be humbled. But that's a good thing. Because God deals with a humble heart. Mr. Vero, <laughs> will you or will you not tell us today who's going to become the managing partner? I am not saying that today. When the time comes and I'm gone, I'll leave word, you'll know. Until that time, I want you all to know that I trust you to carry on what we've started here. I trust you to move forward with the banner. Sometimes that requires terrible sacrifice. But understand that sacrifice for what's right is never in vain. Thank you all. Joe, may I see you outside for a moment, please? Sure. So, um, did you forget to tell me something? Uh, I don't think so. So, what are you and Catherine doing tomorrow night? Uh, we have, uh, we're going to a recital. Oh! I was supposed to tell you about the recital. I'm sorry, I forgot. I hope it's not too late. It's not too late. I'm glad to hear you're still going. I'll meet you there? Yes. Um, look, I'm, I'm sorry, Anthony. I, I, I didn't tell you. I, I guess I didn't think you were serious. Let me tell you, Joe, I'm very serious about good music. As a matter of fact, there's nothing I'd rather be doing tomorrow night, of all nights, other than listening to some young people working hard to keep alive the most beautiful music in the world. So, uh, I'll see you tomorrow night then at seven. I'll save you a seat. Sounds good. Great. Hey, thanks again for helping me close out. You're welcome. I wish you would let me get a real job though. I mean, I don't even have enough money to get a dress. I shouldn't have said I'd go. No. Stop it. You're going to go and you're going to have a great time. We'll just go to a resale shop next week and get something there. They always have stuff for like less than $100, so. $100? We can't afford to spend that on a dress for me. I've seen the bill, Sarah. We're barely making it. You know, I would have thought the same thing until last week when one of my regular customers came in and wrote me a check for $3,000. What? Why would someone do that? I don't know. He said maybe it was an answer to one of my prayers or something. So he's a Christian? Yeah, well, 
I mean, at least I, I think he is. We had some weird conversation about it. But I've been praying for his family, so I don't know. Well, we still can't use it to get a dress. We need to save what we don't use. We're going to the resale shop next week, okay? It's covered. Not another word about it. Okay, but we really can't. What would mom have wanted? I can't even believe you pulled the what would mom want card. Stop it, okay? You're gonna look great. position for Vera, who has always been considered well respected by his associates. We will keep you up to date on Aunt Rosa, how are you? I'm well. Look, I just wanted to call to make sure you know that Jim from my office is going to take very good care of you if anything should happen to me. I just don't want you to worry. I think I would turn off the news for now until this whole thing blows over. It's just making you upset. I know, Aunt Rosa, it's not fair. But we both knew this day was coming, didn't we? We knew they'd find a way to discredit me, even if they had to lie about it. And now that day has come. I only hope that the people who are at this recital haven't been watching the news all day. I'd hate to distract from the kids' big night. I better go now, Aunt Rosa. Goodbye. I love you too. Don't you work for Anthony Vera? Uh, why? Haven't you seen the news? He isn't who he seems to be, is he? Excuse me. I don't know what you're talking about. Excuse me, is the seat taken? No. Yes. Yes, I thought Mr. Barrow was sitting with us. No. Please. In a field by the that guy that works with the, the one who's been all over TV? Yeah, you know, the one that's up for federal judge. No, yeah. I, I, I think you're thinking of someone no, else. Sorry. I think it's you. Oh, I think okay, why don't you go ahead and go on with your friends. Have a good time. Just be sure you're home by midnight. Okay, sweet. Thanks, Mom. And Dad. Hey, Michael. Great job. Thank you. Thanks. See y'all. Okay. 
Oh, isn't he amazing? Yeah. He, he's a great kid. Aren't you glad you came? Yeah, I am. I, I, I wouldn't have missed it. Yeah. I, I'm sure Mr. Vero didn't come because of all the stuff in the news, you know. Yeah, I guess. Come on, Joe. You know all that stuff is a trumped-up lie. I mean, what are you really so worried about? Sorry, what? <laughs> Look, I, I thought we were getting better. I mean, I thought we were communicating more. We are. We are better, okay? It's, it's, it's fine. I, I just, Catherine, I just have a lot on my mind. I, 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 need, to, uh, I need to do some thinking. I, uh... What? What? What is it? You, you brought your car, right? Can you get home okay? Yes, okay. I, I did, but where are you going? Look, I, uh, I just need to go to the gym and work out. I, I'm just a little stressed, and I need to think things through. So um, I'll, I'll just see you later, okay? Oh, okay. Oh, I have something in my car for you. Okay. okay. Rosa uh, wanted me to give this to you. It belonged to Vero. It was his Bible. She oh. wanted you to have it. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm, that one's mine. Okay. She gave me this one. Okay. Um, you gonna be all right? I, I just need time to think. Oh no, yeah, I'm fine. Are, are you gonna be okay? Yeah. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Breathe, talk to God, and listen. Joe, I won't be seeing you again this side of heaven. A heavy burden of responsibility is laid on your shoulders now. As I indicated I would, I have officially named you as managing partner of the firm. However, that's not the burden I'm talking about. I know you may be very disappointed in yourself right now. You may be feeling even ashamed and humbled. That's a good thing. It's just where you need to be. Right now, as God looks at you, he only sees Christ's perfect righteousness. You are righteous in God's eyes, not because of anything you have done or have not done, simply because of what Jesus did on the cross for you. You have been a believer since you were a kid, Joe, but you are now just realizing your need for grace. This moment is why Christ died for you, Joe. By his blood, you are made clean. 
If you choose to dwell in this dark place, feeling sorry for yourself, God cannot use you. Now you must move on and give the grace to others. Please, please start with Catherine. She is hurting more than you know. Gain Catherine's trust and talk to her. Ask her about her deepest pain. Share God's grace with her. Pray before you speak. Let God's Spirit speak through you. Love her as He does, unconditionally. I have included something in this letter that I hope you will treasure as much as I have. This is the letter my dad gave me before he died. Please read it to the partners. Well, I have been avoiding this for a very long time, God. Um, but Miss Rosa seems to think that you are an answer to a problem that I really didn't know I had until recently. See, I've, um, oh, whew, I've made a mess of my family. But uh, you you know that. I mean, it's it's not it's not really a mess. It's just uh, it's not it's not really a family. And um, I I I guess I I haven't really done my part. And I haven't let them. I haven't let them love me, and I um. Oh, I definitely haven't loved them. And you know why? You know why. It hurts. It hurts. And I am just so, so afraid of, of being hurt. And, um... <laughs> And you know why, God, you know what happened to me. You know me, you know all of this. And I just, I just, I just don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand why that had to happen. I was, I was just a little girl, God. Why? Why did you let that happen to me? What do you have to say to that? <laughs> you love me. Is that all? You love me? Why? Why do you love us, God? People can be so cruel and evil and... <laughs> I just don't get it. <sighs> but you love us. <sighs> okay, God. Will you please help me get my family back? Will you just give me peace and rest? I want to let these walls down, but I don't know how to do that. And I don't know where to start. But I cannot keep going on like this. 
I am losing my family and I am just so tired. I am so tired. And I don't know what to do next. Law enforcement officials are still at a loss in the case of Anthony Vero. Barrow's body was found in this patch of woods just last week. It appears that he had been shot by an experienced gunman who left no evidence behind. You may remember that Anthony Barrow's name was in the news just previous to the shooting. Just as it seemed certain that Vero was to be named as the federal court judge in Can this you district, me in the, uh, information the surfaced minutes, about his alleged connections sure. of an illegal black market adoption ring. Investigators only uncover more questions as they look for answers. Vero's alleged criminal activity has not been proven. No word on whether or not the apparent murder and Vero's association with the black market ring are connected. This is Tara Edwards with KNWZ News. Please leave this firm standing on the principles found in God's work. Seek to know him better. Work hard to keep your family together and work hard to keep this firm aligned with the original goals that my dad laid out for me. He made a great list. Now this is from Vera's father when Vera was very young. Pray before you speak or act. Treat everyone as if he were Jesus in your midst. Look at people through God's eyes with grace and love. Look at yourself with those same eyes. And let all your words and actions come from a place of love, not greed. None of this is new, Anthony. But it's all ancient wisdom straight from God's word. His truth never changes. Now, what I want to say to you today may seem a little strange. Uh, but, um, well, here it goes. Now, with all the false allegations against Vero, the firm has taken a hit. And uh, a lot of our clients have left. They've sought all the counsel. None of us are going to sustain anywhere near the income we had in the past. So, I thought I'd propose that we shut down the firm. Those of you who still have a career... Start over somewhere else, try to salvage it. I thought about it. But you and I both know that Anthony didn't start this firm just so that it'll be income for its attorneys. We have a mission. Anthony stood right here and told us that our job was to clean up the mess. There are people out there who are hurting. And when they call a law firm, it is their last resort. They have nowhere else to go. He also told us that he didn't open this firm to get rich, but rather to help those people get through their darkest times. Divorce, death, child abuse. That's where we come in. And he told us, treat your clients with dignity, with respect, and most of all, do it with compassion. Now, if you wanna join me in continuing to do that and try to achieve that goal, I believe we're gonna to have to do some pretty unconventional stuff. We're gonna to have to take care of each other. At least until this whole thing blows over and we're able to get the firm back solvent again. We may even have to risk a lot more than money, but probably our reputations. So, if you need to move on, I understand. But I propose we keep going. Because what we're doing is helping a lot of people who are out there hurting. Hello, come in. 
You're the one that Anthony set up to take care of me. Yes, ma'am. I'm Jim Freeman. It's so nice to meet you. Well, thank you. He spoke of you often. Well, I, I miss him a lot. I feel sometimes as if I'm just waiting around now that Anthony's gone. It seems that my time should have been up before his. I'm not sure how God's going to use me now. What do you mean? Well, he used to bring people to me, people that needed help. And he wanted me to minister to them, and, and we both enjoyed it. Oh, I'm sure God's not through using you yet, Miss Rosa. I, I hope not. Tell me, what do you have there? Lots of papers for you to sign. Okay, let's get going. I'll give you some time to discuss with your family everything we've gone over. Uh, our firm will be very glad to handle your father's estate. But I understand you, you need time to talk to everyone and make sure they're on the same page. So. I appreciate that. Dad uh, never did trust lawyers, and uh, I guess that's why everything's such a mess. He uh, never trusted anybody and just kept moving from one law firm to the next. But, you know, we have some really good partners in this firm that will help you sort everything out if you if you decide to go with us. Hey, by the way, are, are you related to uh, Josh Edwards, the marriage counselor? Yeah, I know Josh. He's my cousin. He's kind of a touchy-feely, overly sensitive guy. How do you know Josh? Small world. We, uh, we refer a lot of our clients to him. Uh, in our firm, if we get a case for a divorce, we require that they get six months of counseling before we even uh, proceed. Really? I mean, isn't there more money in it for you if they get a divorce? It's always been our firm's policy. And, and actually, my wife and I are having sessions with Josh, and um, I think he's going to help us. Well, well, good luck with that. I've been taking the cleaners twice in divorce, so uh, I guess it would pay if you could stay married. You've never gone to your cousin for help with that? No, no, we're just totally different people. Well, actually, it's, I probably just don't want to do the work. You know, it takes a lot of work. Yeah, it does. It is a lot of work, but uh, I don't know. My wife and I are determined to make our marriage work, and uh, yeah, it's just too important. We don't, we don't want to give up. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, let's go ahead and draw up those papers. I want you guys to handle the estate. You sure? Really? Yeah, I'm sure. That's it for now. What next? Next is probate court. I'll contact you as soon as we have a date set for that. I'll also be checking in on you periodically if that's okay. I'd like that. I wonder if you'd like to come over and have some dinner and meet my family sometime. Oh, that would be very nice. I would enjoy it. Tell me, I've been thinking about Joe. Do you think he'll be a good leader for the firm? Yes, ma'am. I believe that he is. I've been reading uh, First Peter th this morning. Oh, which passage? 4-7. You want me to read it to you? Sure. I have a little time. This is one of my favorites. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. <clears throat> Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Come and have my whole heart Come and be my next breath Come and be my first love again For everything I've wasted Jesus, you can make it Into something beautiful again Oh, come and be my first love Come and be my first love again Lord, come and be my first love Oh, come and be my first love again Come
come and have my whole heart Jesus be my next breath come and be my first love again oh for everything I've wasted Jesus you can make 